we're in the um, in the it's Sidra Sim Shalom for Shabbat and festivals. We're on page 158. This is the Musaf Amida. We, st we started this uh, section at, at the end of our, our time together last week. This is the Kedushat Hayom, the sanctification of the day. Uh, we just finished the Kedushat Hashem, the sanctification of God's name. And uh, so now this is the special edition for, for the Sabbath. And uh, we, we looked at this Tikanta Shabbat, which is the first paragraph on the page, and we saw how it was a reverse acrostic, uh, starting with Taf and ending with Aleph. Uh, right there. And we saw some themes. So let's just, to remind ourselves of uh, what, the, what the themes are, I'll just read it out loud in English, uh, and then we'll see where perhaps some of these ideas have come from. So you instituted Shabbat, loved its offerings, commanded us regarding its ceremonies and the order of its libations. Those who delight in it will always possess glory. Those who taste it earn life and those who love its words choose greatness. Then from Sinai, they were commanded about it. Adonai, our God, you commanded us to offer an additional offering on it as is appropriate. So we started off the, in the, to the first sentence, a reference to the sacrifices, right? God, you've, you've told us exactly what the sacrifices are that we've got to present on Shabbat. Uh, and then we introduced the idea of delight, right? Shabbat, you know, for those who observe Shabbat will, you know, get glory. They'll earn life in the world to come and greatness and all of these things. And then we refer back to the event at Sinai where Shabbat was commanded. Um, and then we return back to the original theme of the Musaf, the additional offering that is presented on Shabbat. So, uh, so that's our introduction to Kedushat Hayom in Musaf. Let's uh, see where maybe this, this comes from. So this is the, the Babylonian Talmud, uh, Tractate Shabbat 118b. So this is towards the very end of the tractate. Amar Rav Yehuda, Amar Rav. So Rav Yehuda says in the name of Rav, Il male shamru Yisrael Shabbat rishona lo shalta bahen uma v'lashon, right? So he said, oh, if only Israel had observed that first Shabbat, then no other nation would ever, no other nation or uh, literally lashon language um, would ever have um, have ruled over them. No nation or tongue would ever ruled have ruled over them. So we're referring to the first Shabbat after Har Sinai, after Mount Sinai. Shana um, How do we know this? Shana as It says, "Vayhi b'yom ha'shvi'i yatsu min ha'am l'kot uchtiv batre vayavo amalek." So um, it happened on the seventh day. Some people went out from the nation to collect, and they didn't find. So we're talking about the incident with the manna, um, which uh, appears right after the Israelites cross the Sea of Reeds, uh, chapter 16 of Exodus. And then what happens immediately after that episode? Then Amalek come and came in and fought against them. So um, they miss, so we seem to be presenting events a little bit out of order. Um, because the Ten Commandments, of course, are chapter 20 of Exodus. So we, we seem to have a little bit of a problem, but that doesn't seem to be a problem for Rav. He seems to place this episode with the manna first appearing as being right after the Israelites got the commandment for Shabbat. And uh, apparently they screwed it up. So they uh, went outside to get manna, only it wasn't, it wasn't there. Um, and that led Amalek to, uh, to come and battle with Israel. So we got that little teaching, and now we, uh, that kind of flows into another teaching. Amar Rabbi Yochan, Mishum Rabbi Shimon ben Yochai. Ila male mishamin Yisrael shtei shabbatot ki hilchatan miyad nigalin. So Rabbi Yochanan says in the name of Rabbi Shimon ben Yochai, if only Israel would keep two Sabbaths according to their laws, according to all the halachot, miyad nigalin, they would immediately be redeemed. Shinamar, as it says, 
So now we quote Isaiah. Uh, so said God to the eunuchs who will keep my Sabbaths. And then if just a few verses later, it says, and I will bring them to my holy mountain and will let them rejoice in my house of prayer. So, and that's a, a messianic vision. So if only the eunuchs will keep my Sabbaths and notice that it's in plural, Shabtotai, my, show, my Shabbat, right? And so the, the basic principle that the rabbis uh, have is that anytime a plural is given without a qualifying number, it means two. We can read it as two. So if they only observe two Shabbat, Shabbatot, and then afterward, you know, it'll lead to redemption. Of course, I don't know why Shimon by Yochad hasn't noticed that it's only for the eunuchs. Yeah. Right. That all we have to do is get all of the eunuchs to observe two Shabbatot in a row, and then we're then we're good. So, but uh, he sees it more 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 collectively, right? So all we need two two Shabbatot in a row for the entire Jewish people, the Mashiach will come right away. Okay. Nice idea, right? So well, we're on the topic oh. of Isaiah. Um, just in the in the chapter immediately after that. We uh, we we find these these uh, these two verses. Im tashim mishabbat raglecha asot chafatzecha biyom kodeshi vekarata la shabbat oneg likdosh adonai mechubad lechibarato measot derachecha mimtzo chafatzecha medaber davar. If you refrain from trampling the Sabbath, from pursuing your affairs on my holy day, if you call the Sabbath delight. The Lord's holy day honored, and if you honor it and go not your ways, nor look to your affairs, nor strike bargains, then you can seek the favor of the Lord. All right, and then the next verse, Ad tit anag al Adonai. Um, I will set you, uh, sorry, that was then you can seek the favor of the Lord. I will set you astride the heights of the earth and let you enjoy the heritage of your father Jacob. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. All right. So, what are the what are the themes that we have in these two verses from Isaiah? Looks like you don't have to do much to get elevated. Well, yeah. it's it's refraining. It's specifically you're you're not doing something. You're not, but what are you doing? Trampling the Sabbath. Right, well, raglecha, right, which is related to foot. So that word, that translation, trample, is pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, but it sounds easy enough. You just have to refrain from yeah. the negative. And most yeah. of the negative appears to be doing business. Yeah, asot chafatzecha, yeah. which is do, doing the, the your, they say pursuing your affairs. Like, chafatzecha, the, your, the things that you like to do, all right? So we're take, taking a break from normal, the, all of the normal activities on my Biyom Kudshi and my holy day. And then you've got to call it a delight. Not clear exactly what Isaiah means. A delight, so an oneg and mechubad. On, so a delight and honored. And again, we get don't look to your affairs. Uh, so we, we see there's a kind of a parallelism in this verse. So on the one hand, we have refraining from certain activities. And on the other hand, doing things to cause Shabbat to be a delight and to be honored. And then you will get to, uh, you will be able to honor in, in God and God will raise you up. So kind of coming back to the Tikanta Shabbat, um, this, uh, whoops. This uh, idea of um, delight, oneg, we see here in me'angeha, those who delight in it, right? Those who delight in it will always possess glory, right? We have the, there we have kavod again as well. Those who love its words choose greatness. So, you know, this, this seems to be inspired by, by what Isaiah is talking about, um, and uh, at least in, in, the, in the central part of this. This, uh, this passage. And it includes the libations. Ah, so, the, and we add libations, right? So um, we were talking about the, the sac, this, 
it's an implication we're applying the, the sacrifices that are commanded on Shabbat. So maybe that's how we make Shabbat mechubad. Maybe that's how we give it honor. Or, um, I don't know if the sacrifices are a uh, delight for everybody because um, most people are not participating in the sacrifices. Um, I don't know, at Sinai, it seems like uh, there's not a whole lot of sacrifice at the bar. Not a whole lot of sacrifice. Like we're not pouring out libations from the bar? Well, that's what I was implying with yeah. the libations. Yeah. Yeah. Well. <laughs> okay. So here, so here we have Tikkan Shabbat. This is really serving as the introduction to this part of the Amidah. So this is the, the paragraph that comes next. Now, um, the version that is on screen, this is the traditional version that appears in, a, uh, in an Ashkenazi Sidur. So let's pay attention to what, to what this says. It, it begins with kind of a normal prayer introduction. Do you hear at Somil Fanecha, Adonai Eloheinu Elohei Avoteinu? Adonai our God and God of our ancestors, may it, you find it favorable or may be your will to bring us back to our land in joy and plant us within our borders. There we will offer before you the offerings that are our obligation, the tamid offerings in the right order and the musaf offerings in the right way. And we will perform and offer this Shabbat musaf <coughs> before you in love, in accordance with your will and your commandment, as you wrote about us in your Torah, transcribed by Moses, your servant, and dictated by your very self. All right. So what? What themes do we note here? Uh, it's looking forward to the future. We will do this. No, look what I have on screen, not what you're looking at in your C-door. No. Oh, oh, sorry, we will do this. Yeah, yeah, sorry. My mistake. Yeah, we will do this. Not, it's a not a seven up Right. We will offer before you. Mm -hmm. Right, so we, we started with um, you know, a, a theme that we've seen a lot in our Sidur, you know, returning us to the land, um, plant us within our borders. And yeah, Max, as you point out, Visham Naase, once we get there, we're going to be performing all of the Korbanot Chovotenu. So the Korbanot are the sacrifices, Chovotenu is of our obligations, right? All the obligatory sacrifices. So specifically, what are those? Tamidim, the tamid offerings, right? So this is the daily offering that are that are offered every single day of the year, kisidram in their according to their order, and then in addition, musafim, the musaf offerings, the additional ones that that are only on the the special the special days that have the extra offerings, like today, like, like Shabbat. Now remember, one of the stories we told about the amidah is that the amidah is a um, is a substitute for the sacrifices. So if the, the three thrice daily offerings somehow correspond to something in the temple, at least maybe shacharit and, and mincha, so then the, we would say that the shacharit amidah took, takes the place of the tamid offering. So on Shabbat, we now need the musaf amidah to take the place of the special offering for Shabbat. So this, this paragraph seems to be referring to both of those offerings. And now, of course, we're in our second Amidah. And then to get specific, we have Musaf Yom HaShabbat Hazeh, the Musaf, the extra offering on this Sabbath day. Again, Na'asev and Akri, we will make and we will sacrifice before you in love, right? Um, all right, so we are, this is a prayer for a return of the sacrificial system. How, how do we feel about that? Personally, not good. Not anything I want to say this prayer. Not anything I'm looking forward to. You don't want to go back to it, huh? Okay. And, you know, this is in high contrast to the Isaiah, which you could say, okay, that's calling from a stepping back from your work and making the day sacred, as opposed to this, which is wanting to do a an action that is not a good, uh, I mean, not anything I want to do. I mean, like I could get behind the Isaiah. I could get behind having Sabbath be a day that's set apart to be holy and so on. This one I have trouble with. 
Although just to, to be a Go ahead. little, little uh, be that Isaiah passage that talks about um, the eunuchs observing my Sabbaths. Yeah. And then, and then I'll, uh, so that passage concludes, um, I'm going to bring all the nations to my holy mountain. I'll cause them to rejoice in my house of prayer. Right? And it goes, right? So my, my burnt offerings and my uh, other offerings, um, I guess that will be acceptable. Because my house is a house of prayer for all of the nations. So, which is kind of an interesting idea. This messianic image makes reference to sacrifices, but it also makes reference to God's temple being a house of prayer. So, um, yeah, so does Isaiah want to return for sacrifices? Probably back in those days, because sacrifices were pretty much the way, the way people did things. Um, but, you know, this, is, this has been the, the traditional prayer that, that Jews have offered for uh, hundreds and hundreds, maybe over, over a thousand years in the, in the Armen Midah, praying for not only a return to, to Jerusalem, but a restoration of the sacrificial system. There's no mention of Kohanim here. It says, we will offer them. Yeah. As we kind of the collective Jewish people, yeah. Well, Rabbi, when you've discussed the concept of holy barbecue, it's a lot less offensive. But I also like the fact that we are talking about it rather than doing it in terms of having these substitutions. I mean, we are using substitutions of, of even saying that we want to return to sacrifices instead of actually doing them. Um, yeah. And I prefer the substitution. But holy barbecue isn't the worst approach. Yeah, yeah, I, mean, I, I would you know yeah. we've talked about this before just you know maybe a lot of people might have aversions to the idea of animal sacrifice in our, in our worship but you know we uh in terms of our treatment of animals it's uh not not something to hold up as a standard <laughs> um yeah yeah the modern version isn't isn't uh, doesn't seem to have any reverence for the for the life of the animal at all yeah I was um, thinking of going back a couple of prayers, but what is it for Israel to do these things? So I think that the priests did the offerings for us. They did mm -hmm. the job for us. Today, could we say that the Haredi keep this Shabbat pure and therefore they did it for us and therefore I can go to the mall or whatever? Uh, <laughs> do you know what I'm might saying? They certainly claim that. <laughs> and, and I don't know who Israel is. I mean, if you think about the conversos or something or, or people who have just fallen off the derrick completely, are they part of Israel? Do they have obligate? Uh, how many people have to keep the Shabbat before the Messianic age rolls in? So, well, I, I, think this, I think Chabad uses this idea. Yeah, just two Shabbat. Tell me. Uh, it's, it's part of their because uh, me because Chabad is a, you know they're they're outreach right so they're they're specifically trying to get Jews who are not observant to you know one more mitzvah right um, so that idea of you know two Shabbat right that 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 can be very appealing in um, in Israel there you know there's this you know it, it gets into politics but you know the you know, you know, many of the, the political parties, the Haredi political parties are very, you know, are, are fine with the secular Israelis continuing with their secular activities as long as they leave them alone. Um, there's a, a concept of Judaism of Tinok Shinishba. So what happens if it, that, that's a, um, a, a child who is taken captive, right? So if a child is taken captive and raised among non-Jews, can that child be considered to be responsible for all of the mitzvot that, that that child never even knew existed, right? Are they, are they a sinner? And so the answer is no, right? They're not because they never had an opportunity to do them. So the, the attitude by many Haredim towards secular Israelis is that they're like the Tinok Shinishba. They never even had the opportunity to observe the mitzvot and therefore they're, you know, they're, we, we can leave them be. The, the ones who are threats are the ones who are claiming to be observing mitzvot but aren't doing it correctly. 
i.e. us. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, um, but but there, the actions of a Haredi wouldn't be enough. I can't hand over my obligations to them. I have personal obligation. I guess that's also there as a question. Yeah, I can't no, say I you, you do you, it you're for not, me. You can't consciously do that. I don't think that works. Yeah. I remember my father used to say to my mother, you do the praying for me, I'll stay home. Yeah. <laughs> I get it. Yeah. All right. So let's let's take a look at a um, particular part of this prayer. It's uh, now in red. Um, and this is the future tense. Right. So there we will offer before you the offerings that are our obligation. And we will perform and offer this Shabbat Musaf. And then at the very end, as you wrote about us in your Torah, right? So those three phrases in Sidur Sim Shalom have been changed. So let's see what they've been changed to. Shasham asu avotenu lefanecha et korbanotehem. There our ancestors offered before you their offerings. And then, well, right, the Tamid offerings in the right order and the Musaf offering in its right way. And then, and they performed and offered this Shabbat Musaf before you in love. Right? And then, as is written in your Torah, which was in place of, as you wrote concerning us in your Torah. Right? So these three phrases have been changed. Um, which uh, certainly changes the, at least the pshat uh, theology expressed in this, in this paragraph, right? We're not praying for a return of, uh, of, of sacrificial worship, um, but we can certainly acknowledge that it once had its role to play in, uh, in the Jewish people's relationship with God. The only problem is the trans, the, my only problem is the translation that isn't, uh, isn't accurate with regard to the Hebrew we're saying. What do you mean? I thought we in the Hebrew in the in a conservative Sidur, we still say the traditional words. No, no, no. What what is what's in blue here is what's in our Sidur. Ah, so the whole thing is so the so the translation is comparable to what we're saying. Con translation is comparable, right? Okay. So shifts it, shifts it over into the past tense. And that's consistent with what much of our Sidur has done. Um, we saw this at the very beginning in Birchot HaShachar where there traditionally there is a recitation of a lot of the rules pertaining to the daily offering that's called the Korbanot. And that was taken out and replaced with, you know, a number of ethical, ethical teachings from, from our rabbinic sources. Um, well, the other, the other interesting thing is it's actually consistent with what you might think, but not necessarily what happens in orthodoxy, because we cannot do these sacrifices now because we were exiled. So it's consistent with that. Well, but this is telling a story. It's, we, we kept the first verse, which is praying for an end of the exile, right? So we have this kind of mess, messianic introduction. Um, and there's no clause given for the exile. I know that elsewhere we say, because of our sins, we are yeah. exiled from your land. I don't know if that's in the festival or if that's somewhere uh, else. It's in the, yeah, it's, it's in the um, Rosh Chodesh and Yom Tov versions. Okay. Or at least in the, it's in the Rosh Chodesh one. Yeah. Because of our sins. That's yeah, different. yeah but, but it's not here. I guess also, I, I mean, if I'm just going to be picky about it, first of all, I approve of this, but the first paragraph, the going back to Israel, it doesn't seem right that we should ask God to do that for us because God isn't the barrier for our not being in Israel. We're the, we're the ones who are making a conscious decision not to be there. And so that, that's a bad, that's a bad line. Oh, so you say like in the contemporary I mean, that world, line could be, yes, what the reality what? in which we could, you know, we could all make Aliyah. Yeah, exactly. the line should be written. We line. remember the days when we were living in our land and we uh, were offering things to you. We yeah, could say so it like there 48, that first line made a lot more sense. Pardon? 
Yeah, so is there a role for the di for diaspora Judaism here? Mm. Yeah, that's... Uh... Well, you know, we can't all I... fit in Israel anyway. <laughs> well, this, we, that's a very pragmatic say... solution, Sherry. <laughs> <laughs> when well, we but... say those things about, we hope that someday we'll all be united. We hope one day there'll all be peace. We hope one day this and that. Those are all wonderful aspirational things. This, that's different than this. Yeah. Hold on one second. I'm going to grab a different seat for a second. Yeah, but I think that's a great question. And it's, is diaspora Judaism legitimate, given that we keep saying we want to get back to our land, we want to get back to our land, and but then we don't really live that. But that was I so much we, more important way back when. Right. Just like it says here, there are ancestors offered before you were offered and they performed and offered. So it's all in the past. Right. And I would add that this whole, you know, entree or beginning is also referring to what made sense. It is. Way back it is. But, when, but it doesn't all necessarily. In the today. U.S., I think that all of us by definition would take issue with the idea of praying to be returned to the land. Because no, we don't want to be in the land. We want to be here. If we want to be in the land. We'd be in the land. And it was yeah. similar in Babylonia, right? Because so many of the Jews that were living in Babylonia didn't go back under Cyrus's yeah. proclamation. Oh, this this has always been an issue. Um, you know, there were in um, you know in the, in the days of, in the Talmudic days there. This issue between Babylonia and Eretz Israel is an issue. There's a thriving community in Babylonia, a more exactly. thriving community in Babylonia, and they think, you know, right. that's right. Where, where where the action is. So they, they were making a conscious choice as well. Uh, does anybody have a copy of the old Sim Shalom in front of them? I might. Like, yeah. Right. Um, go ahead and open to Shabbat Musaf. Um, it's the mini one, but it should Yeah, that'll, that'll work. Shabbat, Shabbat, best of the service. Yeah, and uh, I believe there is an extra paragraph which is not in this C door for some reason. All right, I've got Tikanta Shabbat. And then Uvilma Shabbat, and then Melech Rachaman. That one right there, Melech Rachaman. Yeah. Go ahead and read that in, in English. Compassionate King, accept with compassion the prayer of your people Israel wherever they dwell. Those who celebrate Shabbat rejoice in your kingship, hallowing the seventh day, calling it a delight. All of them truly enjoy your goodness, for it pleased you to sanctify the seventh day, calling it the most desirable day, a reminder of creation. Right, and we're, we're so notice that, that the the reference to wherever they are, yeah. right? So here we have a nod to um, to Jews living in the diaspora as well. So that that's a also a not a traditional paragraph. It was added in that in that Sim Shalom, which was came out in 1985, and then when this one was published in 1998 it was taken back out, which is oh. kind of interesting, oh. right? Yeah. It is. Um, Mike, do you have Mishkan Tefillah in front of you? You're no, right I now. don't, but uh, Mishkan doesn't have the entire Musaf uh, service, as far as I can tell. Is, is there something there for something for Musaf? No, and not that I could find. Nothing you could find, okay, well. Oh. I uh, could be error on my part, but I went looking. Okay, all right. Do you know why they took that paragraph out? I don't know why. Um, I don't know why, that's a good, that's a, that's a good question. Um, in the um, Machsor, there's also an additional paragraph that was added that also makes reference to Jews living in the, in the diaspora. Um, so, yeah, but you can you can see that these are kind of contemporary theological issues that our our Sidurim are wrestling with. You know, do we pray for a return of the sacrifices? Do we? How how comfortable are we with changing or adding to traditional prayers? Um, you know, can can we accept? Look, 
a certain degree of cognitive dis dissonance in our in our prayers. Well, and, and interesting to me is also like in Israel, the view has changed. The Museum of the Jews and Diaspora now has a different name huh. to, to make it that they're accept, equally accepted. I can't remember the exact name, but I know it got huh. changed in the last five years. Uh, interesting. And, and didn't, didn't Netanyahu within the last few years also say, tell the Jews of the diaspora that, you know, we, we don't need you here anymore? <laughs> I wouldn't <laughs> they were, be surprised. There are. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. Well, right now, let's say we were all in Israel. It's, it would be a scary time. Oh, yeah, that would be. Yeah. Okay. And I we, mean, because the diaspora at least will keep uh, yeah. our people around on earth, but uh, it's very risky for all, all of us to be in the same place today. Well, yeah, I've heard uh, comments by the, by the other side, I'll say that they would prefer us that way because it would be an easy target. Yeah, of course, of course. All right. Okay, so let's let's come back to our, our service. So we've seen, we have this, um, whether we're talking in the past tense or in the future tense, we've now made more specific reference to the Musaf sacrifices that are for Shabbat and that provides a good opportunity to now have a quotation from the Torah. Um, this is Numbers 28, verses 9 to 10. This is from Parashat Pinchas. This is the same couple of chapters that are recited on all of the holidays as the Musaf offering. Uh, sorry, as, as, um, yeah, as, as the Maftir reading, so the, the extra reading for the holiday. And it appears that that quotation from the from numbers also appears in the Musaf Amidah for each of the holidays. And here we have it on, on Shabbat. So and on the Shabbat, misspelling, sorry about that. And on the Sabbath day, two yearling lambs without blemish, together with two tenths of an ephah of choice flour, mingled with oil as a grain offering, with the proper libation, a burnt offering for every Shabbat, in addition to the daily burnt offering and its libation. Right, so here, so in this particular calendar of Jewish holidays that appears in, in Pinchas is you know, very precise about all of the exact sacrifices that have to be brought. And introducing that entire section is, is the, um, the details for the Tamid offering. So here we've said all the Shabbat offerings in addition to the Tamid, which we already mentioned. So what's the difference between a korban and an olat? A korban is kind of the generic word for sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Ola is a burnt offering. Okay. All right. So here what is we have a... Um... Rabbi? Yeah. Rabbi? Third to last yes, word, yes. it's olat. How many... <laughs> How many of the sacrifices are wholly burnt up and how many are eaten by somebody? That's um, my biggest concern with, with the animal sacrifice system is that things being burnt up completely. The waste. Yeah, so the Ola is burnt up completely. Yeah, but how of, of all of the sacrifices that would be proscribed if we're supposed to go back and do them, what percentage are completely burnt up? Percentage? I don't know. I think part of the... I mean, you have an Ola, which is burnt up and it's entirely certain sin or guilt offerings. Portions are, are burnt up. Uh, some other portions have to be eaten by the priest. Um, some portions just, they go to the priest as the priests do, like they're as, you know, they're kind of payment or, or something. And then the rest is maybe eaten by the officiant. Some of them, like you would burn a kind of a representative like handful of the of the grain or something like that, and the rest might be consumed. Um, I, I I don't know. I mean, most of, you know these offerings here that we're reading about, these are offering in one place, just just in the temple in Jerusalem. If you're living off, you know, in your village in the Galilee, there's no there's no sacrifice, right? Maybe every once in a while you might make a pilgrimage, and and you might bring you know, a Thanksgiving offering, or maybe you've got a, uh, 
a guilt or sin offering hanging over your head that you've got to that you've got to offer. But you know, probably sacrifices are not a major thing on a on a regular basis in your life. Okay. All right. So this is um, our, our quotation. By the way, do you remember in Shakri, we also had a quotation of a passage in this section of the Amidah? Uh, the Shamru. The Shamru, right? Shamru Bene Israel, the Shabbat, right? So, and there we're talking about Israel keeping the Shabbat. There's no reference to sacrifices. It's about observing, observing the Sabbath. As a, as a sign of the covenant between God and Israel. All right, so what comes next? Yismechu. All right, so what is Yismechu? It's sung in joy about the observance of Shabbat. Yes, yeah, Sameach, happiness or joy. So uh, those who keep happy. Shabbat and who call it a delight will rejoice in your kingdom. The, the uh, order of the English kind of reverses it here. Yismechu v'maltecha. They will rejoice in your kingdom. Who? Shomrei Shabbat. The guardians of the Sabbath. The Korei Oneg. And those who call it an Oneg. A delight. Right? Notice the language from Isaiah. Am mekadashe shvi'i. A nation that sanctifies the seventh. The seventh? Kulam yisbe'u, they will all be savea, satisfied. Ve'yit'angu, and they will, again, we have our word oneg. Yit'angu, right? they will delight mituvecha from your goodness. Uvashvi'i, and on the seventh, ratsita bo v'kidashto. Um, you, uh, I guess, desired it, maybe, or you you accepted it, the Kiddush to and, and sanctified it. Chemdat yamim oto karata. You called it the favorite of days or the delight of the days. Zecher lemasev reshit. A remembrance or a memory of the acts of creation. Right? All right. And so how, how do we sing this prayer? <laughs> so how, and how, does that, how does that melody make you feel? Happy. happy, very right? happy. And in fact, all the melodies I know are um, are very joyous for this, yeah. Appro appropriately so. Yeah. Is there a tension between um, acknowledging Shabbat because of creation as opposed to uh, the redemption from from Egypt? Well, we we get both. Mm -hmm. So that you don't see it as a tension or an either yeah. or. Um, so what, why would that be a tension? Are there some people who think you should do the Shabbat because of creation? And other people say, no, you should do Shabbat because of uh, Mitzrayim. Well, the, the Torah the, the uses both. The, the Torah itself uses both. Okay. Um, think about the, the Kiddush for Shabbat. Right. All right. So we say, uh, I praise you, Hashem, our God, who rules the universe, instilling us the holiness of mitzvot and cherishing us, cherishing us by granting us God's holy Shabbat lovingly, gladly, a reminder of creation. Zecher lamasev reshit. Right. We're quoting. So this line, Zecher lamasev reshit, this appears in the Kiddush for Shabbat. Well, what's next? It is the first among our days of sacred assembly that recall the exodus from Egypt. Right? This is in the Kiddush. So, what is it? So, Zikaron the Masev Reshit, and then we have Zechir Litziat Mitzrayim. Right? It's both. Right? Thus, you have chosen us, endowing us with holiness from among all peoples, granting us your holy Shabbat lovingly and gladly. Right? So, this that's the Kiddush. Very similar. In, in its themes and language to Yismechu. Hmm. So what's the connection to Yitziat Mitzrayim? What is the connection to Yitziat Mitzrayim? Um, uh, let's see. 
Because it's obvious with creation. I think it's a good question, Max. I always thought that they just threw it in there. Yeah. Well, Which, it's a big day of reflection of all these things. I, I mean, the thing that comes to mind is it took them seven days to get to the Sea of Reeds, but it's not clear whether that happened on Shabbat or if they celebrated Shabbat in the middle or if they didn't celebrate Shabbat because they hadn't gotten Ten Commandments yet. Okay. All right. So first, Exodus chapter 20, verse 8. This is in the Ten Commandments. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. You shall not do any work. You, your son or daughter, your male or female slave, or your cattle or the stranger who is within your settlements. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth and sea and all that is in them. And he rested on the seventh day. Therefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it, right? Creation, right? That's why we observe Sabbath. Now, let's go to Ten Commandments, take two, Deuteronomy, <laughs> chapter five, uh, verse <clears throat> Um, so pages stuck together, uh, verse 12. Observe the Sabbath day and keep it holy as the Lord your God has commanded you. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. You shall not do any work. You, your son or your daughter, your male or female slave, your ox or your ass or any of your cattle, or the stranger in your settlements, so that your male and female slave may rest as you do. Remember that you were a slave in the land of Egypt, and the Lord your God freed you from there with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. Therefore, the Lord your God has commanded you to observe the Sabbath day. Right? Two versions of the Ten Commandments. And the reason about, for Shabbat is different. I knew about Zachor and Shamor. I didn't know about the second part of that. Yeah. So what's the significance? Like how, how does that make sense? How, do, how does Shabbat make sense as, in a, as a memory of Exodus? It's a chance to rest that we never got when we were slaves in Egypt. <laughs> Okay. I think it comes right after the instruction to make sure everybody in your household, including your slaves, including your animals, also rests on Shabbat. Right, so maybe there's a connection there. But it is, it is curious that the Torah itself has that dual connection. Okay. And it's also, it's it's a sign of the covenant as well. That that's it's kind of third meaning. Right, because we don't wear it to fill in on Shabbat because Shabbat is already a sign. Ot, right? Ot hilalam. Wait, say that again. Because of what? Ot. It's an ot, which means the sign. Ot hilalam. The Sabbath is a sign of the covenant. And what does it think, think of the Shema? Vayula um, ot al yadecha. Right. Right. Um, it shall be an ot on your hand, the tefillin, right? Mm. So if the tefillin are an ot and the Sabbath day is an ot, then we don't need that extra ot of tefillin on the Sabbath day. So tefillin are not worn on Shabbat. Okay. Curiouser and curiouser. Yeah. Okay, so this is our, all right, we, 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 we mentioned the uh, Isaiah with the, the focus on oneg, the light, and then here we have a yit angu in, uh, in Yismachu. Um, all right, so you may recall back to the Shacharit Amida. The same, the, the, the parallel part of that Amida, the Kedushat Hayom, the sanctification of the day. So there it begins Yismach Moshe, right? Moses was Sameach. Moses was happy. Here we have Yismachu, all of Israel is happy. <clears throat> the thing that we're being happy about are, are, are not quite the same. <clears throat> in in Shacharit, we have Moses rejoiced at the gift of his portion when faithful servant you did call him a crown of splendor upon his head you did place and his standing before you upon Mount Sinai, and two tablets of stone he brought down with his hands, and written upon them was the keeping of the Sabbath, and thus it is written in your Torah. So this is the um, Moses being overjoyed to receive the Ten Commandments on which are inscribed the laws of, of Shabbat. 
And here in Musaf, we also have joy, but this is referring to the, um, the joyful observance of the Sabbath by the Jewish people. I, 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 I found that, par that parallel uh, interesting. I just noticed it when I was kind of getting ready for, uh, for, for this class, that, that this parallel of, of joy is, is there in, in both, both Amidot. I always have felt that Shabbat was supposed to be a joyful, restful time. And I wonder how much these themes all complement in a way, appreciation, appreciation that God created everything, appreciation that God freed us from slavery in Egypt, and that we should rejoice about those things. Yeah, I think, I think that's exactly right. I think I mentioned the um, lighting Shabbat candles, which appears nowhere in the Torah, is considered to be an obligation based on this idea of Shabbat being a delight. But there's a seems to be kind of a problem with it, right? The Torah doesn't give us a whole lot of detail about the specifics of observing Shabbat. But one of the details it does give is you shall not have, you not shall kindle any flame and, and you shall not, you know, carry any flame throughout through your settlements. It's not, wouldn't be such a, far stretch to uh, assume that meant that we can't have flames in our house on, on Shabbat. Um, and yet the rabbis, they do not, you know, they, they don't go there, right? They, they say, no, we, we have to have flame in our, in our homes on, on Shabbat. Um, Karaite Jews did not have that, right? Karaite Jews, they specifically um, kept their homes dark because they were following what the Torah does seem more explicitly to be com commanding. And that became an issue of, uh, of contention between Rabbinite Jews and, and Karaite Jews. Uh, so much so that the Rabbinite Jews included a section in Kabbalat Shabbat um, between, between Kabbalat Shabbat and Baruch Hu, there are um, a recitation of all of the laws of lighting Shabbat candles. Hmm. Right. So, um, you know, it's from it's rabbinic texts about from the Mishnah and the, and the Talmud of, and, and Midrash about, you know, what kinds of wicks you can use, what you can use for oil, uh, all sorts of details about that. Of course, these are rabbinic texts. <clears throat> so if you had any uh, suspicion about if somebody was a Karaite sympathizer or not, you can just see what in, in shul are they reciting the uh, these uh, these rules about lighting Shabbat candles or not, because if they are, that means they're faithful to the rabbinite uh, system. But if uh, if not, then they, they could be Karaites. You know, the, the fact that we kick off Shabbat with light and we end Shabbat with light. And uh, to me, that just you know, bookmarks and emphasizes the joy and the celebration around what Shabbat means. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, well, metaphorically, the lights come together because the Havdalah candle has to be multiple wicks. Yeah. And then what happens Excuse if me. your house okay. is on fire? Yeah. This, is, uh, this is just an excursion, but I just got a text and it said, my cousin in Israel just sent me this and his pictures with the whole sky lit up with rockets. Brock is from Gaza. He said, people overall are okay. We hung up on the phone because the prime minister and defense minister were getting in on the TV, getting on the TV. So it's gotten worse as we're sitting here. Yeah. I mean, the whole sky, it's like, uh, it looked, um, there looked like about 20, 20 bright lights that you could see. Where, in that where, where, your, where does your cousin live? You know, I thought that they were up near Haifa. But I could be wrong. Uh, this is, you know, a friend of mine um, writing, and it's hard to remember where everybody's family was. Yeah. But I was surprised that rockets coming actually into Jerusalem. So this is, um, if I'm right about it being high far. Speaking it's, about fire and yeah. light. Yeah. Yeah. Are, people, yeah, yeah. are people here familiar with what triggered this particular round of violence? I got a letter from um, Shirat Hadin, the Israel Law Center, that explains it well. Basically, um, other than the underlying dispute over whether Israel 
has sovereignty over all of Jerusalem or not. That's the deeper mean the deeper reason. But um, the media may talk about evictions in East Jerusalem, but these were uh, based on the fact that the uh, Jewish people had purchased the land legally and were wanting uh, the tenants to pay rent. And this has been a dispute in the courts since the 1980s. And the Supreme Court was about to make a ruling when the violence erupted over this supposed eviction over not paying rent for all that time. So Israel's basically not allowed to um, ex exert its, uh, its regular, um, what do they call it? Laws over things like a property law in East Jerusalem. So that's what the fundamental dispute's about. Well, but as we have we've the seen, whole... uh, small things can uh, serve as the triggers for, for these, uh, these kinds of flare-ups. Um, I'm sorry for I'm sorry for putting but, us on this direction. I just got the text yeah. and it just flashed and came over my screen. <laughs> well, let's let's return to our 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 sidur. Um, after uh, Yismahu, we have uh, this uh, next paragraph, um, which is word for word the same as what we saw in Shacharit. It's also it's also in um, uh, Arvit in the evening service and in the Mincha service on, on Shabbat. So this is the final kind of paragraph, which ends as you can see, Mekadesh HaShabbat. Blessed are you, Adonai, who, who sanctifies the Sabbath. So the, um, the bracha for this section of the Amidah is, is exactly the same as we already had. It's just the material leading up to it, which, which changes. Um, here, the, 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 I guess the, you would say the main theme has been the, the Musaf sacrifices uh, as being special for Shabbat. But the bracha, it's, yeah, you, you might think that there would have been a different bracha. Um, but, um, but no, we have. We have this one, the Kadesh Shabbat. And, uh, and, and this one also seems to st still be in keeping with the themes that we've kind of just come to through, through Yismachu. We kind of got away from the reference to sacrifices. And here we're again focused on the plan, the more the, the lighting, delightful aspects of Shabbat. Right. Accept our rest, sanctify us with your commandments, give us our portion in your Torah, satisfy us from goodness. We had that same language in Yismuchu, Sabeinu, and cause us to rejoice, Samchenu, again with, with, uh, with joy, and purify our hearts to serve you in truth. And grant us that in our God lovingly and willingly your holy Sabbath, so that Israel who sanctify your name may rest on it. Blessed are you, Adonai, who sanctifies the Sabbath. And, uh, and that, that brings us uh, in and an end to the uh, um, to the kedushat hayom, and uh, and from here on out, the amidah is exactly the same as it as it was during during shacharit, and and for every amidah uh, of the year, we have the same opening three, the same closing three blessings. It's just the middle part that that changes. Okay. Any other qu questions on? On Musaf? No, I was just going to say that it's the same. Yeah, I can follow the same from 117, 118, yeah. all the way to 158, 159. Yes. Well, How long does it take? Shalom Rob, right? Sometimes? Um, to, to, so, Susan, you asked the question first. How long does it take? To, like, to How long does, how long, yeah, 10 minutes? Uh, the, the entire Amida or just the middle section? The Musaf Amida. How long does the how long uh, how uh, how much longer is our how much service, does it add to the service Musa? to do Musaf? Yes. Oh, it's probably a good fifteen minutes. Tops. Okay, thank you. Right. If it's if it's, I mean, lately we've not been doing a, a full repetition. So if we do a full repetition, that means there's an entire silent Amida, which maybe takes five minutes, and then a full recitation. 
by the leader. And depending on the melodies and the pace of the davening of the person leading, you know, that can, that, that can uh, affect things to some, to some degree. Um, it's, not, it's not a particularly long service. Now that we've been meeting outdoors, we've been doing a Hechi Kedusha, which means the leader um, recites the first page, so 156 uh, out loud, and then the Kedusha is on 157. Um, and then we, it's silent for the rest of the Amidah. So with that, it's, it's faster. So we're probably talking 10 minutes tops. So um, Max, you're asking about Shalom Rav. So Shalom Rav is the substitute for Sim Shalom that appears in afternoon and evening services. Right, so. Um, well, so, right, so just technically, it's not the same three at the end. It's the same three themes, but. Ah, right, I see what you're saying. Yeah, so it's, um, but, but regardless of whether it's Shabbat or weekday or holiday, or whatever, it's, it's, you know, Sim Shalom in the morning, Shalom Rav in the afternoon and evening. Okay. Right, and, and it, it's, it also ends with the same, you know, it's Birkat Shalom, it's a blessing for peace. Hamarechet the Moish Elba Shalom, the one. You know, praise are you God who, who blesses his people Israel with peace. And regardless of whether it's Sim Shalom or Shalom Rav, it's the same closing uh, blessing, the same Khatima. Either way. All right. So this is a, a good place for us to stop. We're, we're getting close to the end. Um, and uh, um, so we'll be uh, looking at... Uh, in Kelohinu and uh, Alinu next week. Oh, uh, that sounds great. So, and uh, In Kelohinu is another inter interesting one. So, <laughs> some hidden messages Ooh. in it. <laughs> Can't wait. <laughs> All right. Well, Shavuot Tov, everyone. Shavuot.